good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Shoma Mukherjee. I'm a radiologist at uh, Mahajan Imaging uh, Vasant Kunj Fortis Hospital. Today, I shall be talking about localizing techniques in early and occult uh, malignant breast lesions. And my talk is basically going to be focused on hook wire localization. Stage breast cancer is defined basically as disease that is confined to the breast with or without regional lymph node involvement and the absence of distant metastatic disease. Early stage breast cancer is potentially curable. Now, breast cancer incidence has increased since the introduction of mammography screening and continues to grow with the aging of the population. Important risk factors being genetic predisposition, exposure to estrogens, endogenous and exogenous, including long-term hormone replacement therapy, ionizing radiation, low parity, high breast density, and a history of atypical hyperplasia. The Western style diet, obesity, and the consumption of alcohol also contribute to the rising incidence of breast cancer. In most Western countries, the mortality rate has decreased in recent years, especially in younger age groups because of improved treatment and earlier detection. Breast cancer is still the leading cause of cancer-related deaths for women worldwide. Although the mortality of lung cancer now in women is overcoming breast cancer mortality in some countries. Now, imaging forms a very important part of the workup of early breast cancer. And imaging includes bilateral mammography and an ultrasound of the breast and regional lymph nodes. An MRI of the breast is not routinely recommended, but should be considered in cases of familial breast cancer, breast cancer associated with BRCA mutations, dense breasts, suspicion of multifocality, multicentricity, Bio, before neoadjuvant systemic therapy and to evaluate the response to this therapy. And when the findings of conventional imaging are inconclusive, such as you might have a positive axillary lymph node status with an occult primary tumor in the breast. And of course, core biopsy, which more often than not today is imaging guided. So these all imaging and biopsy go to uh, form a very important and a component of workup of early breast cancer. American College of Radiology, now with mammographic screening, detected malignancies are often small, clinically occult, and they are amenable to breast conservation therapy as opposed to, as opposed to mastectomy. Standard for preoperative breast lesion localization has been via localization. This facilitates breast conservation therapy by enabling the clinician to guide surgical excision of non-palpable breast lesions. So now the earliest needle localization procedures, the radiologist would just place a plain straight needle into that corresponding quadrant of the breast under imaging guidance and as close as possible to the target lesion. The surgeon often requested that the needle be introduced perpendicular to the chest wall along the anticipated path of the surgical dissection. Now the problem was that the needle could be easily displaced during mammographic compression or the transfer of the patient. And initially, they would just tape the needle hub to the skin to prevent it from being displaced. And there were occasional reports of needle-induced pneumothorax. Now, in 1979, Ferris Wall and Howard Frank, they developed a guide wire system that could be positioned in the breast. The wire had a hook on one end so that it would remain in the intended position. Now, the limitations was that it was a single system unit, like the wire came within the needle and the tip always protruded from outside the needle tip. So what happened was that the needle and the wire could be advanced further, but it could not be retracted because the hook was extending beyond the needle and would engage in the tissue. And because one more thing was that the external portion of the wire was only slightly outside from the needle hub. So there was always potential for wire migration into the breast. So to address these issues, Daniel Copans developed a hook wire system that could be after loaded into the needle. So the needle per se could be repositioned as many times as needed before the wire was loaded and deployed. So now Copans, he made the wire much longer than the length of the needle and therefore he limited the danger of it being the wire being drawn into the breast. Now after this, many uh, different needle wire localization devices were created but this Copan's needle continues to be the most popular and the most commonly used. So before you start the procedure, it's important to review the relevant imaging findings and to become familiar with the target lesion or multiple lesions. 
and you choose the best imaging modality for guiding this procedure, typically mammography or sonographic guidance. MR and CT guidance is less, uh, less commonly used. A discussion with the surgeon on all aspects of the case is a must. And of course, informed consent has to be taken on the day of the procedure. So wires are placed on the day of the surgery, preferably. They can be placed even 24 hours before, but ideally for the comfort of the patient, it's better to place it on the day of the surgery. And now you can use multiple wires. You know, if the lesions are larger than two centimeters to bracket in the lesion, you can use multiple wires. Or if there are masses with satellite nodules or there's an accompanying microcalcification, multiple wires can be used. Now there are a variety of needle lengths and introducers uh, ranging from three to 15 centimeters in length and 16 to 20 gauge. And they are all available in a single use sterilized packages. Now the distal end of the wire can have different configurations, but the commonest is a hook. It can be a barb or a pigtail configuration, etc. Now going about doing the procedure, the routine sterilization and local anesthesia, then the introducer needle is inserted percutaneously into the breast under imaging guidance. Once the int introducer needle is positioned into the targeted location, the needle hub is then held in place. And then the wire is introduced into the tissue through the needle, allowing the hook to deploy. And approximately four to six centimeters of the wire protrudes from the skin following the procedure. This wire can be secured to the breast with a tape. And the wire, like I said, can be left in the breast for several hours. Now, this is just a small demonstration of how it is done. Uh, this is the needle. I have placed the wire inside it, but I made sure that the tip of the wire is well inside the needle, uh, well inside the needle tip and not protruding from the side. So I'll just play this video. <coughs> just push the needle inside, right? And then once you are in that location, you push the wire till you feel resistance. Once you're feeling a resistance uh, that the wire is no longer going inside, gently uh, try remove the needle while pushing the wire inside, right? Once the wire gets engaged, you can see that this wire does not dislodge. So this is a simple procedure. Anybody who is used to doing FNACs of the breasts, et cetera, can do it. And I'm sure a lot of you are already doing it at your centers. Okay, so this is an ultrasound uh, uh, video of the same. You can see the needle track. This ecogenic thing is the needle track and it's going inside the uh, lesion over here. This is a angulated mass. Here is the needle. Right? Yeah, so then the wire is being pushed inside. It's gone beyond the needle tip and you can see it very well within the center of the mask. And once the wire, uh, the hook is inside this lesion, one can gently remove the introducer needle while keeping the uh, wire fixed. Now post-procedure mammogram is obtained to confirm the location of the wire. This is a must. And uh, this is the operative specimen. As you can see, the wire is very much inside, right? And this was an invasive uh, carcinoma, a small invasive carcinoma. And you can see that the wire is still inside, right? Now, after the target tissue is excised, the specimen radiographs are obtained to confirm removal of the lesion and the hook wire. And we typically do two orthogonal planes. These radiographs are helpful for also assessing close or positive margins. Here is the speculated mass with the guide wire inside. Now feedback regarding the margins of the target lesion can aid the surgeon in determining whether additional tissue must be removed to ensure grossly negative margins. Now here's another uh, case. This is an MRI of the breast. Here you can see a dilated duct and there is some enhancing intraductal nodule over here. So this is the lesion and this is the hook wire. I generally like to go parallel to the chest wall, uh, but even with these uh, needles, you can, uh, you know, if you're comfortable, you can use a perpendicular approach. There is very less likelihood of uh, really injuring and going right up to the chest wall. 
uh, but preferably try and use a uh, plane that is goes parallel to the chest wall unless the surgeon would like you to use a perpendicular route, right? So here is the lesion and here is the hook wire which is traversed one margin of the lesion. Okay, so this is the hook wire here. This was a small dilated duct with a nodule inside. And this was a small papilloma here. And uh, you can see that the hook wire is still inside, right? So <clears throat> generally, I prefer to use ultrasound guided procedures, but there are times when uh, uh, a mass is, uh, you know, some uh, lesions are not visible on ultrasound, like just microcalcifications. In that case, a stereotactic mammographic or a simple alphanumeric plate can be used. This is an alphanumeric compression paddle. And using this, you get uh, coordinates in the X, Y, Z planes. And in the alphanumeric plane, uh, with the alphanumeric plate in two axes, with a stereotactic in three axes, X, Y, Z, and one can place a hook wire. Now, uh, apart from that, MR guided wire localizations are also being done. I personally am not doing that, but this is a representation of uh, what is required. This is the MR machine. You need a 1.5 Tesla to 3 Tesla. This is a special breast coil. And then uh, basically the lesions that are not visible only on MRI and not visible on mammography or ultrasound, one can do an MR guided biolocalization. Now the coordinates of the ta target are identified with the computer software, the skin entry side, the optimal needle trajectory is selected and MR compatible needle guide wires. For MRI, you need an MR compatible needle guide wire. These are introduced, here are the grid holes over here. These are introduced through the grid holes overlying the skin. Now, uh, it's a very safe procedure and I've hardly ever come across any complications, but yet the radiologist and the surgeon should be aware of complications. The patient may experience pain at the wire side, hematoma development, vasovagal syncope, wire transection and migrations have also been reported. Intraoperatively, the wire can get transected and a piece of the wire can be retained in the breast. So it's important to take specimen radiographs to document the retrieval of the target tissue and the intact wire. If the entire length of the wire is not visualized on the specimen radiograph, it's important to convey the same to the surgeon. Uh, so that was about hook wire localizations. There are also many other non-wire non localization techniques that is using radioactive iodine seeds, radar reflectors, magnetic seed markers, RFID tags. And basically these would require a dedicated handheld intraoperative probe for the surgeon to detect exactly where these uh, were implanted. Uh, coming now to surgical clip placements, uh, neoadjuvant systemic therapy is increasingly recommended for patients with early breast cancer. The rate of patients with path pathological complete rem remission is increasing due to the use of modern chemo chemotherapy regimens and targeted therapies. Now, it's important to mark a lesion with a clip before the start of NST in order to safely identify and localize a clip and the tumor bed after completion of NST. Now, sonographic placement or detection of the clip is much preferred to mammographic guided marking. And this is because it avoids radiation exposure. It reduces time. And definitely, ultrasound guided procedures are so much less painful for the patient. So this is what I typically uh, use. This is your double trigger ultra clip, which is marketed by, uh, sorry, okay. Uh, which is marketed by BD. And this is just a, a clip deployer. It's just a clip deployer. So in case I'm asked just to uh, put a clip, then I use this uh, under ultrasound guidance, uh, just like you do a biopsy or an FNAC, percut using the percutaneous approach, you, uh, you approach the lesion. And with the press of the trigger, the coil is deployed within the center of the lesion. If it's a bigger mass, then you can use multiple lesions to bracket it. And in case a biopsy is required, in that case, I use a coaxial system. I use a coaxial biopsy gun. So once the introducer needle is placed, I take a biopsy. And after the biopsy, if uh, the surgeon so requires it, then uh, this can be introduced through the introducer needle and the clip or the coil can be deployed. Uh, so with that, I come to the end of my talk.
I hope it was helpful. And thank you so much, Dr. Mandeep and the organizers for 